forced apologies. Telling your child, say you're sorry when they make a mistake. Let's talk about it. I know that this comes from a good place as parents, right? I know that ultimately our goal is to raise kind and respectful children who make amends. They take action when they make mistakes, especially when those mistakes affect others. But in today's video, I want to talk about why I'm not a fan of forced apologies, why they often backfire on us as parents, and why they don't ultimately teach our ultimate goal, which is kindness and empathy. And most importantly, well, how do we teach those lessons in a developmentally appropriate way that also doesn't lead to more power struggles? So let's dive in. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Dr. Jasmine. I'm a psychologist and mom of two with one on the way. Uh, around here, we love to talk about all things positive parenting, positive discipline, tantrums, potty training, all that fun stuff. Before we dive into the video, I just wanna quickly share with you, I have a free gift, which is my free discipline workshop, how to get your kids to listen to you without yelling. Um, in this workshop, you're gonna learn step-by-step -step how to increase cooperation um, and get your and get better listening uh, with a step-by-step -step guide with real-life examples and again it's completely free so you can go to the mompsychologist.com forward slash workshop to watch it on demand okay so let's dive into this video I'm gonna be breaking down the four biggest reasons why forced apologies often backfire on us parents and number one reason why is because they're inauthentic, right? Like a good apology, if you think about it, if you take a step back, should come from an authentic place, right? We as the receiver of apologies, we love when we feel like the person who is apologizing to us is authentic, right? They actually mean it. They've taken some time to reflect and think about their choices and how it impacted you and they are genuinely sorry and they are genuinely coming from a place of I want to make this better right I see the impact that it had and I am so sorry and I want to make this better I want to change and I want to make amends with you that feels authentic right that feels like okay something real is gonna come out of this this is not just lip service right you're not just saying this because I'm upset at you or I'm hurt and you feel like you need to put a band-aid over the situation right but when we force our kids to apologize it's often nine times out of ten coming from an inauthentic place right they haven't had time to reflect and they aren't thinking of an apology on their own right this is something coming outside of them and think about the implication that has on their relationship number two reason why I'm not a fan of forced apologies is because they often create unnecessary power struggles right you're forcing your child to say something say you're sorry and what if commonly what happens the child's like I don't want to do that right why are, they don't understand why you're making them apologize they feel forced right and when our children feel forced it commonly leads to them you know engaging in a power struggle with us so what if they say no then what do we do as the adults right then we're in an awkward place right then we're even more upset and now we're like you better say you're sorry and now we might be dishing out threats or punishments because they refuse to say sorry so I'm not a fan of forced apologies because it creates these unnecessary power struggles which lead to more disconnection and now your child really is not reflecting on on their choices <laughs> they're really not thinking about the impact of their choice on that other person now they're more focused on you and getting and protecting themselves from you right why are you forcing me to do something I don't want to do you're the enemy now number three it's often done with our own ego at mind right let's be real right when our child makes a mistake right whether that means they hurt someone physically or with their words we often feel embarrassed as the parents right forced apologies are coming often from a place of I need to save face here I need to show that I'm still a good parent right I need to show that I'm taking action and I recognize that my child made a mistake and I'm doing something right it makes us feel like we're doing something in the moment um, and that's often because of our own <laughs> our own ego let's be real about that right know the intention of what you're saying to your child right is it coming from a place 
of your own ego, then that's a good indication we, we should take a step back and think about it a little bit more. If it's performative, right, if we are telling our child, just, just say you're sorry because we're trying to perform in some way, then that's a good sign that we should drop it. The other reason why um, forced apologies often backfire is because there's no lesson, right? What is your child learning from saying, I'm sorry, right? It's often empty. Again, there's no real reflection and they are performing, right? They are, it's performative, right? It's let's just say sorry and let's just move on. There's no lesson. There's no often real action that happens. So then again, they, they make the mistake again and then they're just saying, I'm sorry again. And the cycle continues. So instead, I want, I'm a fan for for teaching lessons and I'm gonna talk about that in a second but I also want to talk about you know from a developmental perspective especially with toddlers and preschoolers that's who I'm speaking to specifically right now they are egocentric meaning that in this developmental period they are coming into their own identity and so they are often focused on themselves which means it's harder for them to step outside of themselves and think about somebody else's perspective right think about how their choice impacted somebody else it's a lot harder for them and I also want us to just kind of put ourselves in our child's shoes and think about you know as adults how often do we apologize especially to our kids right apologies take higher order thinking right it takes us being able to step outside of ourselves recognize our mistake reflect on our mistake and the impact that it had on somebody else and then have the courage to say look I made a mistake and I'm sorry right that takes a lot and so if we can remember like how hard it is for us to say sorry whether that's to our boss our co-worker our friend our partner our family member our child right then think about how hard it is for them especially in this developmental period where they're for more focused on developing their own identity doesn't mean that they don't have empathy doesn't mean that they never can say I'm sorry and really mean it it just means that it's harder for them right and from a developmental perspective it's not always appropriate so let's talk about how to foster remorse how to foster empathy um, and good connections in relationships I think that's what we're, we're aiming for as parents right we want our child to learn empathy and ultimately it's because we want our child to have good relationships with others so how do we teach that in the moment right when they make a mistake and we feel the urge to say tell your friend sorry right so how do we go about that instead so that we're not forcing apologies um, and the thing is what you want to ultimately focus on at the end of the day is the impact of of their choices helping your child understand because again this is a lot harder for them helping them step outside of themselves and recognize the impact of their choice on somebody else okay that is gonna foster empathy that is gonna foster good connections with others okay so how do we do that in real life the first thing is to observe in a non-shaming way. You wanna make observations of what you just saw, if you saw it, if you didn't, have them tell you the story if they're verbal, right? If not, you just sit in that moment and you say, I don't know what happened, but it seems like we're all upset here, right? But don't try to put a story together <laughs> when you don't have all the facts. But I'm assuming, let's say you know the facts, you know what happened, you saw them hit their their sister, or you saw them push down their friend or take a toy or whatever it is. You want to tell the story and share what you observed, but it's really, really important you share it in a non-judgmental way, right? When we make judgments on behavior, we are are going to lead our children to get on the defensive mode right up uh, all of a sudden mommy and daddy are against us they are judging us they are mad at us and now I'm going to protect myself when we put our child on a defense mode they are less likely to reflect on their own decisions and they are more likely going to want to defend themselves oh, I didn't do that oh what do you mean oh well she pushed me first and right then the excuses pile on and then you're feeling more frustrated because you're like well you're not taking responsibility well think about how what energy you're bringing right if you've already decided who's right and who's wrong um, then we've already lost right so come into the situation as a non-judgmental observer and just plainly say you know what happened 
when you hit brother, it hurt his body and he started to cry. And now you look upset, right? Whatever it is, just say it in a very objective way, as objective as you possibly can in these moments, right? Because what you're doing is you're causing everybody to slow down and piece together what happened. And this is going to spark insight, right? This is going to spark reflection. Oh, okay. So A happened and then B happened, right? When I hit brother, it hurt his body and he cried and he turned red, right? Um, that's going to help them understand the impact of their choices. Um, and point out feelings while you're doing this, right? You were mad at brother, and then you pushed him down. And then he felt really sad because that hurt his body. Okay, you see how I am not only pointing out the other person's emotions, but point out your child, right? They hurt in that moment. They were angry. They were sad. They were frustrated. They were embarrassed, whatever it was. Try to help identify all the emotions at play. Again, this is going to spark insight. This is going to help them understand themselves more, <laughs> right? And this is also going to help them understand the impact of their choices. And of course, number three, you want to establish a boundary, okay? Hitting is never okay, right? Hitting hurts or whatever it is, right? You want to establish a clear boundary around the unsafe or aggressive behavior and then invite them to think about what they can do to make it right now the the younger your child is or the earlier you're in this process right let's just imagine this is a new thing for you guys and you haven't done this before then expect them to not know what to do right and this is where our teaching happens right these are where the lessons are and it's beautiful right so don't feel like oh well i had to come up for, with the the uh action so it's not really you know um, it's not really coming from them. It's not really authentic. That's okay, right? It's going to come with time. It's going to come with lots of prompting and modeling. So sometimes in the beginning, or even if your child is older, it's okay if you have to help them think about, okay, well, how can I make amends, right? How can I make this right? Does brother need help up? Does brother need a hug? Does brother need a band-aid or an ice pack, right? How can I make this right? Can I build back the tower that I just knocked down, right? Whatever it is in that moment, help them brainstorm ways to make it right. Now, if they are offering the child who has hurt some physical touch, you want to model for them how to ask for permission first like hey do you need a hug or hey can I give you a hug uh, can I help you up right just so that the you're also modeling like just body consent in general the minute that they participate because sometimes kids they're too emotionally activated they're not in a place to participate and that's okay we're not forcing them to take this action but the minute that they do participate the minute that they're like oh okay I want to help you get the band-aid or I want to help you get the ice pack thank you so much for your help I know that brother or sister whoever they really are going to appreciate it thank you so much and you know just really show your appreciation and praise them for taking action because the more we do that the more likely they're going to want to do it again um, which is the whole point of it all right we all make mistakes and we can normalize this in the moment right we all make mistakes what matters most is that we make them right even if it was by mistake and that is the lesson that you're teaching. And by you teaching the specific action of how they can make amends, that is gonna mean so much more than just a, I'm sorry, right? And then just moving on, right? Because now they're taking action and that person really recognizes that. And that's what you wanna point out, right? Wow, your brother is really going to appreciate this, that you took the time to grab them a band-aid or whatever it is, right? And now they have more insight and they have more empathy towards that other person. All right, I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about this topic of forced apologies. And before you leave, I wanna give you a free gift, which is my free discipline workshop, how to get your child to listen to you without yelling. It comes with a step-by-step -step guide on how to get better listening with real life examples. So you can go to themompsychologist.com forward slash workshop or the the links will be in the description and the comment sections if you're watching on youtube that is it for this video i'll see you in the next one bye